Welcome to the second video on GCP levers. This one's to do with mechanical advantage. If you haven't seen the first video, I would suggest you stop this video, watch the first one, then come back to this one. It will make more sense. In the first one, we talk about the three classes of levers and where they occur in the body. Today, we'll look at how those levers create mechanical advantage or mechanical disadvantage. There is always at least one question on the exam paper to do with this topic. So, we always get a mechanical advantage when we have the effort arm longer than the load arm. So the effort arm is longer here than the load arm and that makes it much easier to move the load. When it's in the other way round, when we have a shorter effort arm and a longer load arm, it takes a lot more effort to move the load. So that's a mechanical disadvantage. So you can see here, first class lever, just like this is. Effort at one end, load at the other, but the effort arm between the fulcrum and the effort, which is that arm there, is shorter than the load arm between the fulcrum and the load. Therefore, you're gonna get a mechanical disadvantage. Now in our body, this occurs when our tricep is the effort, our elbow is the fulcrum, and this sporting example, where the hands are holding the football is the load. Okay, So our effort, the muscle, the tricep is pulling on the ulna, which will bring the lower arm from flexion to extension to throw the football. Now, although it takes a lot of effort to move the arms in that position from the tricep, the tricep doesn't have to contract very far to create really large movement at the other end. So the ball can travel with power and speed and travel a further distance. So that's our first class lever. Now, you may also have in the exam an example, and I've given one before, of rowing. Okay? Now, in a rowing situation, you've got a short load arm, uh, effort arm at this end, where the rower, who's the effort, is pulling the load, which is the end of the oar that's in the water. The fulcrum's where the oar joins the boat. Now, a very smaller movement from the rower creates a really big pull at the other end of the oar. So the rower might only be moving about a metre, whereas the end of the oar is going to travel a lot further in the water, creating speed, because the oar is in the water for longer and travelling faster. So, I'm going to show you the video of them rowing from above, and you're going to see this first class lever in motion. So we've got the effort, which is the rower, and they're pulling the load, which is the water. So you can see the rower is barely moving, their hands are not moving very far at all, but the end of the oar is in the water for a very long sweep, for a very long period of time. The end of that oar is moving really quickly, which generates the boat's speed and power. So you can see there how long the, the end of the oar, the paddle part, is in the water. That, although it's taking a lot of effort to move it, create speed at the other end to gain an advantage. So from the video you can see that first class lever in action and you can see that first class lever here on this picture. So we've got the effort, which is the person pulling the oars, their muscles. We've got the fulcrum, which is where the oar meets the boat and joins. And then we've got the load where the water's being swept backwards to generate the power of the boat. So second class levers. Now second class levers are great because there's always a mechanical advantage because the effort arm is always longer than the load arm. Even if I move the load to here, the effort arm's still gonna be a little bit longer. So in this scenario here, we have the foot as our second class lever. We have the gastrocnemius pulling on the heel to lift the load, which is our body weight, and the fulcrum is the front of our foot. And it takes very little effort to be able to lift our body weight, which is why our gastrocnemius is a super muscle. It can lift the whole of our body weight, but purely because it's a second class lever and that the load is in the middle. It makes it a mechanical advantage. 
it can move a load of a really small effort. It can lift the whole body. Imagine doing an upside down handstand and trying to lift your body weight that way around. It would take a lot more effort. But when we're standing, our gastric nemius has to do little effort to lift our whole body weight. This also helps with running and jumping. It's always a mechanical advantage. And although it's slow, with a limited range of movement, is extremely efficient as a lever. Okay, so third class levers and mechanical advantage. Now, a third class lever is always at a disadvantage because the load arm between the fulcrum and the load is always longer than the effort arm. Okay, even if I move the effort closer to the load, that arm is still shorter than the load arm. Okay, so it's always at a mechanical disadvantage. Now, we're going to look at someone kicking a football here. So, it always requires a massive amount of effort to, to move the load. So, in this example, the quadriceps of the effort, they're trying to move the lower leg to be able to kick the football. So, the load is the lower leg and then the football. A small amount of quadricep movement, though, can create a really large amount of movement at the foot end. That creates speed and power. So, where the quadriceps attach to the tibia, a small contraction creates a really massive amount of movement. So it takes a lot of effort for the quadriceps to do it, but the advantage is that it can move the foot quickly and a long range of movement to create power. So fast movements are created, large range of movement at the lever end. So as you kick the football, you can kick it over long ranges. So in summary, a first class lever has a mechanical advantage as it can lift large loads with relative ease, especially if the F arm is longer than the load arm. It has a disadvantage if the load arm is longer than the F arm, and it also can't move the load as far or as quickly as a third class lever can. Second class levers, they have an advantage always because the effort arm is always bigger than the load arm. Okay, So they can move very large loads with very little effort in comparison. Disadvantage, they can't move loads as far as a third class lever. So again, they can't create the same speed or distance for the load as a third class lever can. And third class levers, the advantage is they can move the load a lot faster and further, creating more speed and power. The disadvantage is the load arm will always be longer than the effort arm, so therefore more effort has to be exerted to move the load. Okay.